Welcome eighth grade. Today we start with rational numbers. Rational numbers are something you're probably pretty f proficient with. You just kind of forget about it because of the name. Remember, watch this video multiple times if you need, then do your homework. If you have any questions, I will be on Google Meet from our normal class time, 8.15 till about 9.43. All right. Division, just remembering how we do it, 36 divided by 3 is 12. 144 divided by 6 is 24. 68 divided by 17 is 4. 3 and then 16. All right. Problem of the day, well done. Learn to write rational numbers in equivalent forms. Rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction where n and d are integers and d is not zero because you can't have zero on the bottom. Okay? So that's a rational number. Relatively prime numbers have no common factors other than one, which means they cannot be reduced if they're in a fraction. So we look here. We have 12 fifteenths. This square is divided into 15 equal spots. 12 of them are full. We have 4 fifths. This square of the same size, excuse me, rectangle, divided into 5 spots. And there are 4 equal, or excuse me, 4 of the 5 spots full. Now, if I look at this number, 12 fifteenths, we're going to see something here in just a second. The space that is covered is the same, and here's why. Both 12 is divisible by 3, and 15 is divisible by 3. When we do that division, we get 4 over 5. 4 over 5 is the same as 12 fifteenths, and the picture kind of illustrates that. Here, we think about it. Now, many of you will probably prefer to do it this way, and I have no problem. I know that 80 is divisible by 8, and I know 16 is divisible by 8. 8 divided by 8, that means 2 over 10. Hey, I can take another step. I can divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get 1 fifth. And I've reduced this fraction. I've gotten rid of all the common things. Hey, I know 8's in both of them, I can divide by 8. I know 2's in both of them, I can divide by 2. All right? This method is plenty fine and very good, and I see many of you use it regularly. The method that they'll show does the same thing, but you write out multiple factors, and you write out multiple factors. Oh, four on top, four on top, or bottom, four on top, four on bottom. So 16 is a common factor of both of them. We may not have known that right away, or maybe some of you saw that. So therefore, instead of taking two steps to do it, they divide by 16, and they get to 1 fifth, all right? And they do very good. All right. Here, we have 18, negative 18, and 29. I know 2 will go into that. It won't go into this. I know that 29 is the only thing that will go into 29, and 29 won't go into 18. I'm thinking they will not reduce. So we write out some factors. We think about it. There are no common factors. That simply means these two numbers are relatively prime. They cannot be reduced because they have no common factors. All right. This one here. Many of you might see that they both have a certain number in common. What number might that be? Divide by 3 over 3. Hey, I get 6 over 9. I didn't go small enough. Divide by 3 over 3. All right, I get 2 thirds. Some of you may have automatically seen that, oh, I could have divided by 9 over 9 and got down to 2 thirds in one step. Hey, that's fine, that's good. It doesn't hurt to take two steps or one step. You would both get to the same answer. Because if I divide, wow, by 9 over 9, I do get 2, and I do get 3. 18 is 2, and 27 divided by 9 is 3. We have our answers. 
All right, what they're gonna say, oh, we wrote it out like this. We see commonality on top and bottom, commonality on top and bottom. Therefore, they know that, hey, we can divide by that nine, and there's the two thirds. You guys are very proficient. I don't see you needing to write everything out. If you wanna take the short steps, that's fine. We look here, we write these things out. There are no common factors. It means they are relatively prime. It cannot be reduced. We look at that, those are equal to one another. Decimals that terminate or repeat are rational numbers. So rational numbers means they can be represented as a fraction or a decimal that ends or repeats. Here's what it means. We're not gonna read that. It is a bunch of mathematical sounding stuff. We'll try to put that in common terms with the next slide. So negative 3.2 and negative 3 and 2 tenths are the same number. Right in, written as a decimal that terminates or ends, written as a fraction. 3, you'll notice that's before, that goes with left of the decimal. 2 divided by 10 <clears throat> is 0.2, so negative 3.2. That's how they got there. A repeating decimal, you might think of like one third, how it's um, 0.33333 repeating. Well, 2 fifteenths, it goes 1 point, or 0.13 and repeats. Those are both rational numbers because they either terminate or they're repeating. All right. Here, how do we write each decimal as a fraction? Well, the stuff before the decimal, we see that as a whole number. So that would be 5. Then, the stuff behind the decimal, say like you should mathematically actually say it. 37 hundredths, because it ends in the hundredths place. Oh. Thirty-seven over a hundred. How did I know a hundred there? Thirty-seven hundredths. So I knew the hundred would go on bottom. I get a fraction. Therefore, they write it as the same way. These, oh my gracious, hitting the wrong buttons, I'm sorry. Those are equal. This one, zero. So do I really need to put a zero out here? No, if there's nothing there, don't need to write it. 622 thousandths. Since it ends in the thousand spot, we put a thousand as our denominator, and 622 goes on top. We've just written it as a fraction. Okay. So if you say the number how it's supposed to be, with those place values, it will tell you literally what to do. 622 thousandths. So, and that's where you get the thousand. Five and 37 hundredths. That's where you get the hundred. Okay. We can simplify. When they're asking you to do this, I won't expect you to simplify. I'll be nice, not be a math jerk today. All right, this one. Maybe try on your own. Eight and 75 hundredths. It's in the hundredths place. Before the decimal goes out here, <clears throat> hundred on bottom since it's in the hundredths place, 75 on top. We will be able to reduce that to eight and three-fourths, we can divide both by 25. That's how they reduce that. Remember, I'm okay with this. If you wanna take a stab at reducing it, that would be helpful and great and wonderful. You know how, so you may as well try. This one, 2,625 ten thousands. So, 10,000 will be on the bottom. And we get our answer. They're gonna talk about simplifying. I think it is by 25 again, and we get 21 over 80. I will happily accept this. Or you see, oh, there's a five and there's a zero. Both are divisible by five. You're more than welcome to do that, all right? Now, this is very true. This maybe is a photo opportunity. If you put this on your phone, I know you have it always. Numerator, denominator. This is literally just division. 
the numerator is divided by the denominator. Numerator inside, denominator on the outside. All right. To write a fraction as a decimal, divide the numerator by the denominator. You can use long division. May have to call back to your fifth grade skills. I know Mrs. Letcher taught it to you so well. Write the fraction as a decimal. So the 11 goes on the inside, the 9 goes on the outside. It is important to remember that there is a decimal right here because that decimal should go right up here. All right? We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, 9 will go into 11 one time. Therefore, 9 times 1 is 9. We subtract that. There's 2. Now, you bring a 0 down. Now, will 9 go into 20? Twice. To put a 2 up there. We will do our subtraction 2. The pattern repeats. Do you see how if I would bring another 0 down? It would be 20. And we'd go 18 and it'd be 2. So, making sure we remember where the decimal is at to do the long division is super important. All right? You could write it as this. Many people use the line to cover the part that is repeating. There is no need to have this decimal. That was to end the sentence. That is a period. All right? We do that there. And 11 ninths and 1.2 are equal. Write the fraction as a decimal. Numerator divided by the denominator. Numerator inside. We make sure it won't go in there. Oh, yep, so they do the subtraction. The decimal here needs to make sure it is up on top as well. Bring it straight up. That's where most of you had your mistake. All right, 20 will go into 73 times, so we do our subtraction. All right, we bring another zero down. We can keep bringing zeros down forever if we'd like. All right, 20 will go into 100 five times, and we do our subtraction. We get to zero. The remainder is zero. This is a terminating decimal. All right. Write the fraction as a decimal. 15 ninths. Numerator always on the inside, denominator always on the outside, no matter their size. All right. Nine will go into 15 one time. One times nine, get your subtraction. There we go. We've got the decimal. 54, 9 times 6 is 54. There's a 6 there. All right. The pattern repeats. Do you see how if we would bring down another 0? It's 60 again. And we do 54 and it'd be 60 again. So we will put a bar over the 6 to show that it repeats. And 15 ninths is equal to 1.6 repeating. All right. Last one we'll try, and then you're welcome to start it on your own. Write the fraction as a decimal. 9 goes inside, 40 goes to the outside. I always like to put my decimal right away, and I think, man, I know not 40 will not go into 9, so I put a 0 as a placeholder. All right, they do the math. All right, then we have 90. 40, excuse me, let me tidy that up a little bit. 40 will go into 90 twice. That makes 80. There's 10. They bring a 0 down. We'll go there twice. That's 80. That's 20. Bring a 0 down. 40 will go into 500, or 200 five times. We get to 0. It is a terminating decimal. 0 is the remainder. So 9 40ths is equal to 0 0.225. The problem most of you will have, this or you will not set up the problem correctly. Numerator, inside, denominator on the outside. That is important. All right, enjoy. Ask any questions during our Google Meets.